Hey guys, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to create a camera controller to follow our player around the map so that we can click and, and we can actually see him go there and not just be constrained to this one little area of the map. We can actually move around and do things. And the reason I want to do this now is because I want to move on to finishing up the combat system. We have a system in place, but it's not there's not much you can do with it. The enemies don't attack back. It's very simple. And it's going to be very simple in the end. But I want to have a way where we can kill things and they'll drop something and they'll fight back. They'll do some damage back. It's not going to be anything big, right? They're going to be able to like auto attack back. So it'll be on some kind of uh, timer based on the stats of the enemy. So if they have a, an attack speed stat, that'll be uh, modifying their attack when they attack us back no animations or anything just simple stuff if you wanted to add in your own models which you know we've not we're not doing we have cubes then you can um, just throw those in and the animations can be triggered from the same code if you're using mechanism system which you should be if you're using anything with you know a humanoid style thing so um shouldn't be hard to trigger those animations based on just a simple trigger in the actual animator wouldn't be too hard to do that, but I'm not going to handle that in this. If we get to it and we actually added models and stuff in the end, maybe we'll, we'll go through some stuff like that. But for now, that's not what I have planned. So this episode, though, has nothing to do with that. We're just going to set up the camera. It's going to be a very simple camera. It's going to be similar to like an ARPG style camera. As you can see, that's kind of where this game is going. You know, you click to move, you click to interact. It's got that angle. It's going to be um, something similar to that. So the camera is going to be a bird's eye view of the player and you're going to be able to zoom in and out using just a simple FOV slider. Nothing more than that. Just something to get us going. So let's do that. The first thing I want to do is set up the camera to start out with. So if I go to my main camera and you can see these are all just all over the place because I just moved it in the editor, right? In the, in the level editor. I didn't actually add the values myself. So what I'm going to do is I want to just zero this out so if I wanted to just, uh, we'll say zero for X, Y, and Z and rotation, my X is going to be 45 because again, I'm doing a, um, ARPG style camera. So I have an idea of how I want, how I want the angle to be. So if we just do this right here for now, and then I want to take the actual position of the camera and raise it up a bit. And the idea is that we're going to be right on top of the player. Oh, that's going to be still zero. And we're going to edit the location from the camera controller, but I just want to get a, a starting point for it, just like that. So I'm doing a 45 degree angle so we can work with that when we do a bit of math whenever we're uh, following the player around because I want to make sure that I stay the same distance from the player whenever he's moving around and also the same angle. So we're not going to be changing the angle, right? We're just going to be zooming in and out. So let's go ahead and I'm going to create a C sharp script. And I'm going to call it camera controller. And you may hear my computer in the background. I'm not sure how much of that noise I can edit out. I am down a fan, so I had to put in an old fan that is extremely loud. And uh, I had to record today, so that's what you get. The fan will be here tomorrow. It's supposed to be here today. Didn't show up. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to first set up a property that's going to determine the distance between the player and the camera. It's going to be a, it's going to do a property. It's going to be a float and I want to call it player camera distance. Okay. I also want a target that's going to be a transform and we're just going to assign it the player's transform. I want to call it camera target. And then I want a, I want a reference to the camera component on this camera. So I just want to call it camera, I will call it player camera. And then I want to know how fast I should zoom in, how quickly I should change the uh, the field of view slider. So it's going to be zoom speed. And I'm going to give it a default value of about 25, just guessing for now. We'll see how that goes. And I'll go ahead and set a couple things up in start here. The first thing I mean is distance. I'm going to be about 10 to 12 units back. So I want to start out at about 10, see how that comes out. 
and the camera is going to be a reference to the camera that this is going to be attached to the actual camera object so getting the component we'll just be getting a using a get component reference for it so I'm going to do player camera is equal to get component it's going to be called camera just the the base camera component because we're accessing something only available to the component we can't go through the camera.main shorthand for this because we're actually using field of view as a property instead of FOV, which is obsolete. So now I'm going to handle this in update. It's going to be happening every frame, but we're only going to do the zooming whenever something's happening with a mouse wheel. So we don't have to actually update the zooming every frame. We'll just check to see is the mouse wheel scrolling. And if it is, okay, so we're going to be updating the zoom. So to get that set up, we're going to be using an axis that is built into the input manager. I'm just show you what it looks like just in case you don't have the defaults set up. In project settings, go to input and axis, and then you have mouse wheel scroll. And here are the settings that are just the default base settings. And we'll be using this to determine if the mouse wheel is scrolling and how much it is scrolling by. So if input.getAxis, and I'm going to be checking if it is for the get axis raw for this one because it's going to be 0 or 1. There's no, it's not going to lerp between 0 and 1. It's just going to be 0 or 1 if the axis is being activated. So I'm going to call mouse scroll wheel. And I want to say if it is not equal to 0, right? So that means it's being used somehow. You can actually, you don't have to use the raw one for this now that I've <laughs> said that. Because if you're doing it no matter what, it's going to be not 0. But we'll just use raw. And what I want to do if it's not zero is go ahead and do the zooming, but we'll get to that in a second because I want to talk about that. Uh, what I want to do first is do the position. So I'm going to go through the transform component, grab the position property, and I want to set it to a new vector three. X, Y, and Z vector three. And we're going to be setting it to, first of all, the X in my system is not going to be changing. Oop, I got to do equals that because of just the way the angle is going to be and the way the player is going to move because I know it's going to be I know what kind of angle I'm going for I'm going for like a Diablo style camera so I know that the X in mine is always going to be just the X of the player it's not going to uh, raise up or go uh, change unless the player changes the player camera distance is not going to affect that and then the camera target dot position dot y oops which is position dot x now the position dot y this is going to change because we're going to set up the camera distance on the y axis so I can do that by just adding actually I think we'll be removing from the player we will be removing because from the player up so camera, what's it called? It's called camera, player camera distance. There it is. So we're going to be subtracting that from the actual player's position. Now, no, camera target will be what we assign as the player to. So camera target dot position dot Y will be the player's position dot Y, as well as camera target dot position dot X will be the player's X position. So we're just taking the Y and we're raising the camera up above the player so we can get that angle on the player, the, the bird's eye view. And the same goes for the Z here. So we're going to do camera dot position, or camera target dot position dot Z. And we're going to, I'm trying to do the math in my head here. I think I'm going to add this one. This is something you have to play around with to figure out how your camera is going to be angled how it's going to be handled. You may do a different style camera entirely. You might use something more built into Unity with the standard assets. But again, mine's very simple, so I can do it this way. So mine's going to be player camera dot distance or player camera distance added to the position dot Z for the camera target. And that should give me, if my math is correct, that should give me the angle that I'm looking for. Because of my main camera has a rotation on the X of 45 degrees. So let's play that and see what happens. Oh, it's not attached. So I to go ahead and grab my camera controller. I want to throw it on my camera. There it is. And I'm going to take my player and add it as the camera target. So now the camera should know 
Okay, I'm tracking the player. Okay, so that happens. So what's happening there? I probably have the math backwards. Let's look at the transform here. Nope, stop maximizing, would you? The X should be saying the same anyway, because it's not going to be... It's going to match the player. Uh, let's take the player, first of all, and zero him out. Let's see, SB1. From the main camera. Y. Z. Hmm. Z should be removed from zero because of the starting position. So, perhaps, perhaps, okay, that's a bit closer to what I wanted. I don't feel as though the X is centered. It has to be, right? It's set to the exact player's X. We'll see whenever we add the zoom in. So that should do that for us. And if I want to go ahead and create my zoom effect, again, we're doing the field of view method for this. Which we're just going to be scrolling the field of view in and out to give it that effect, which is a, it's a standard way of handling it. But you could also take the camera itself and move it around. That will require more vector math for us, though. So we're going to stay away from that because we're doing a simple RPG. I'm going to call this something like um, scroll is equal to, and we're going to do input dot get. Now this one will get the axis because you need to know how much we're scrolling, not the axis raw. And the axis I want, again, is the mouse scroll wheel. So we're going to take that, and we're going to subtract that from the camera's field of view because if we are scrolling up, we want to zoom in, but we have to subtract the field of view for that to happen. So if I were to go ahead and go through my player camera, nope, player camera dot field of view, do field of view, and you're gonna subtract the scroll from that. Now that's gonna work fine for us. We'll see that working, but it's gonna be very slow. Oh, I have to get the right axis here. It's going to be very slow because we're not modifying it with any kind of uh, like I said or scroll speed earlier. So just to show you this, if I do this and I select my main camera, you can see field of view. If I do it myself, you can see the effects, right? But if I do it with the mouse wheel, I'm scrolling right now, but it's taking me a long time to get in, right? So what I'm going to do is go here and I'm going to modify the scroll by the zoom speed. We're going to just multiply it, multiply scroll by zoom speed. Now scroll is going to be anywhere from zero to one and it's happening every frame that I do this on. So zero to one multiplied by zoom speed means that if it's 0.1, zoom speed is going to be very low, right? But if it's one, it's going to be 25 or whatever my zoom speed is set to. Now if I test this, now I can zoom in and out and it works as you'd expect. Now just play around with the settings and get it to how you want in your game. Um, mine's not going to rely heavily on zoom. I just think it's a cool feature to have. So, but I feel like it's a little slow. So I'm going to take this and make it maybe 35. And I think this is too close uh, to start out with there. So I'm going to take it out to 12. And do that right there. We're following the player around and I can zoom in and out. And it is centered on the player. Now you're noticing something there where if we zoom in too far, what's happening is it's just flipping, going into the negatives on field of view. So it's gonna flip the camera upside down. If I zoom out so far, it's gonna to go too far. It's gonna clip past 180 and gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna fix that by clamping the values really fast. Maybe I can just do a mathf.clamp. That looks for a value than the min and the max. So I can probably take player camera dot field of view and say the min is zero and the max is 180. I will say player camera dot field of view is equal to and then we want to clamp it. 
didn't actually do this for when I was testing it, so I didn't actually plan for this. Now we zoom in and it stops, and we're saying, uh oh. So I'm just going to take um, this and say you can't go 15 and 100. Again, it'll depend on your on your game, on your settings. So I zoom in. That's as far as I can zoom in. If I zoom out, that's as far as I can zoom out. That's pretty cool. So we're going to stick with that. Now we could have uh, did this a bit more in line. We could clamp the result as we multiply it. Uh, but we'll just keep it this way for now. Because this video has gone on long enough for just a camera. So that's going to be it, guys. If you have any questions, go to forum.gogamegrind.com. Go to questions, and you're going to be able to just make an account real fast. You can do it. You can log in with Facebook. Or uh, it just takes two seconds to make an account. And go ahead and ask me a question. Get in on some suggestions. Do whatever you like to do and uh, start some discussions. It's easier to get to people over here because it's not flooded by other comments and we can actually share code and all that stuff. So if you have any questions related to the code, it makes it a lot easier. Support the channel on Patreon, patreon.com slash game grind. We've got a new tier there for you guys to check out. I will see you next time whenever we work on the uh, combat system, I hope. Hope that's, yeah, hope that's the topic for next because I want to go ahead and get the enemies attacking back to the player. That way we can actually create some scenarios where we have to like run through a dungeon or something maybe they'll aggro the player and chase him and attack him that way we'll see um we'll find out next time thank you guys for watching my name is austin and i will see you next time